Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Red Tool House. In this episode, we are going to run our electric fence wire. We got our post set and got everything in place there. So now we're ready to run our new wire. And we're gonna start here at our starting point and use our new tensioning system and, and see how all that goes. So we'll just uh, jump right into it. <laughs> Okay, well our first thing we're going to do, of course, is pick our starting point. This is an existing corner on our pasture that we have uh, in play. So these, uh, these lines are hot and we'll tie those in at the last. But I'm sitting here amongst all this stinging nettle and I know you all think, oh, nettle, nettle tea. Yes, great for nettle tea, but it still makes my hand break out. So um, use this tree as, as my anchor. I've got uh, power coming to the other side of it. So I'm going to start with my, uh, my new run of fence here. And what I'm going to do, if I don't stick my leg in the fence, is start with one of these corner elements. And uh, I'm not sure what these things are technically called, but they they're allow you to do corners or starts. But basically the concept is one wire comes around this, this element here and can be an anchor to the tree, so that can be grounded out, while this, uh, the exact uh, perpendicular element, uh, would be your actual fence um, that has has a charge on it. So first thing I'm going to do is put a nail in here because I'm just going to wire uh, run this wire around this tree to hold it and hold this uh, corner piece in place. But I'm going to put a nail in and bend it over just so it doesn't slide up and down the tree. So all the other fence that I have in place, I'm using the four, or using the 17 gauge wire. This time I'm going with. Um, 14 gauge and the reason why obviously stronger but a little bit more visibility and I'm not worried about the pigs the pigs know where it is it's the deer that are absolutely wearing me out so I'm hoping a little bit thicker a little bit more visibility and uh, maybe that slows them down a touch keeps them from completely destroying it but uh, we'll see what it's like working with this 14 gauge obviously everything's going to be tougher so uh, we'll see how it goes so again we take this element here and we simply just slide it in this way where it has these little cheater clips. So again, I usually just let it bend to that shape. So you can see that's just gonna hold that there. And when I take the, the fence and, and run it perpendicular as a loop and uh, run it to the next tree, when I start to put tension on that, then everything's gonna be kept there. So this will not be hot, but the fence starting right here in this loop will be hot. Now I'm gonna put a fence tensioner uh, on the on the fence line this whole run this whole run will go up the creek about 50 feet and then turn go all the way up to the top of the pasture where we had the stump and uh, I'm going to have one tensioner on that so this entire run probably um, 130 yards will be on one tensioner so we'll see how that works out okay so uh, one thing I like to do is kind of a cheat you can do it with string or since I'm taking out this old uh, 17 gauge that's busted in other places. As you're going around and nailing in your insulators, you know, some people will or some people will say, well, I like to uh, nail all my insulators up and then come put the fence in at last. And that's fine if you've got really nice flat, even ground. You say, oh, I want my insulators to be eight inches from the ground all the way around. Perfect. But uh, in West Virginia and other uneven places, there's a lot of peaks and valleys. So there's times where I'm trying to get over a hump. So I want the uh, insulator to be higher or I want it to be lower to fill in a valley. So what I like to do is I like to just take either some string or some extra wire, um, especially since I'm using that 14 gauge, it's not very easy to, to move around and you don't want to un unroll a bunch of it. And you know, that uh, roll of wire is almost 50 pounds. So you don't want to be lugging it back and forth a lot. So I just take this extra piece of wire and just wrap it around through my insulator. My insulator's on the back of the tree here that you can't see temporarily. And then I just stretch it to my next post or tree So when I stretch that, stretch that out and see, okay, how far off the ground am I going to be along that run? So I see, well, if I put this down lower, then I'm almost touching the ground there on that hump. So I'm going to go a little bit higher here. And then uh, I know my sows are going to be in this pasture, so uh, the sow's not going to go under this, a piglet would. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to go with that height there. So I'm just making a little marker there and know that that's where I'm going to put my next insulator. Now, as far as insulators, I've talked about these before in previous episodes. Um, so if those, if those of you haven't gone back, I'm using these nail-in. And uh, you can see, I'll get a little closer here. 
You can see the way these work is there's two opportunities to nail into the top and the bottom. So you nail on top, you get a nice uh, uh, attachment point there with those two nails. And of course you got this um, element where you, you run the fence through and you drop the pin in. What I like about that is you can pop the pin out if you ever need to take the fence out. You don't have to worry about threading it back out. You don't have to twist it 90 degrees like you do uh, some of those other insulators. And you've got a really good, tense, uh, very, really good tension on your fence. That becomes a little bit harder. But these don't break off as, as quickly when the deer hit them as the, the yellow ones do. So I really like these and they're a little bit more expensive, but they're worth it. All right, so uh, I've got my first start going. Now, of course, working with this... 14 gauge wire, <laughs> this will be fun. This stuff is heavy. I'm stuck in a tree. I'm for crying out loud. Keeps coming undone. All right, I strongly suggest having some sort of device that you can hold this and allow this roll to come off. Kind of reminds me of uh, Wiley Coyote setting dynamite for the Roadrunner. Need a little more junk to trip over. Okay. The key is to keep tension on that roll because obviously if it comes undone, you're going to have you. Be like a Clark Griswold bird's nest there, big knot that you're not going to need to get out of there. So what I do again is extend my fence and then just bring it in and start dropping the pins in. So I like where that's going. So I come back and look at my height. I like that. Now right here on this hump, I'm about 10 inches off the ground. Here at this little valley, I'm about two feet off the ground. Well, again, this pasture is going to be designated for my big sows, so not an issue right now, but obviously you don't want to create double work for yourself. If I ever decide to put piglets in here, then I'm going to have to do something about that. So what do you do? Well, a quick fix would be to take a step-in post and just stick it in there and tighten that down. Now, obviously, as you put more tension on that, that step-in post may pop out. You may have to come in with a T-post, um, some of the rebar little posts, something like that. It doesn't have to be as substantial as some of your main posts. It'll be something to kind of pull that down and take that little valley out there. So I usually come back and touch that up afterwards. And of course, turn the boys loose with uh, the sickle or the weed eater to uh, come get all the, the weeds away from it. So that's what you do. So you just pretty much just continue your run all the way around your pasture and tie it in. When we get to the end, we'll, we'll put a tensioner in and show you what to do there with a the tensioner. So uh, one of those you get what you pay for situations, um, I've always used, when it comes to T-posts, obviously I can't use those nail-in, the black nail-in posts I like, or insulators I like, obviously, because it's a T-post. So we would always use these yellow clip-ons and have the ones with the extension. This is a, a two-inch extension, I believe, and you can get them as much as a four-inch four extension, which you think, oh, that's kind of cool. You have it extended away from your T-post. That way, if your animal gets too close, your horse, your cow, your pig, whatever, uh, they're going to contact that wire way before they'd ever get into your post. Well, it's good in theory, and for most farms, it probably works fine, but for us, uh, the deer just wear these things out. When a deer comes through and, and comes through this fence, of course, he's put an immediate amount of strain on that, and if he breaks the wire, then okay, the insulator survived, but sometimes Sometimes um, it doesn't break the wire, it just breaks the insulator. So they, these insulators always seem to fail right here at that extended portion. So that becomes an issue. So what am I trying? Well, a little bit more expensive, a little more heavy duty. This white uh, T-post clip clips onto the T-post just like this does. But everything about this is just built a little bit more sturdy. Obviously, there's not that much of an extension. It's only a quarter inch away from the T-post. But I'll hold these up here so you can see the, uh, the difference there. You see that... Um, the thickness of the yellow extension is much thinner than the thickness of the white. So that's going to hold up much more, be a lot more sturdy there. Um, and again, the, the fact that it's not extended away from the T-post too much. Now this has a, a similar clip system, but even the hooks are much more heavy duty. I, sometimes these, these hooks will just get broken off. So, uh, you know, it clips on the same, so you just uh, 
start doing your T-post there and just wrap it around and pop the back in place. A little bit of play, but the, uh, the tabs on the T-post will keep it in, uh, in, the, in close proximity to where I want it to go. <clears throat> All right, so this is the end, and our home run is back there. <laughs> so I cut the home run off the spool, and uh, I've got enough slack, of course, to come to my post. This is my corner post. So just like at the beginning, I hammered a nail in to just keep the, the, the uh, retaining wire from going up and down the post. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add one of my uh, uh, little yellow corner elements here. So I'm going to take this wire and get it twisted and put my uh, corner piece on. I like to bend that so it takes that uh, there's little clips in there that help hold that in there so you can see how that works. So now we want to get our home run here. And we're gonna, I'm gonna just hang on to that. Now, obviously we don't wanna run our home run through this piece. We wanna, wanna run the home run into the tensioner. We have this uh, metal tensioner a lot better than those cheap white ones. Uh, these are adjustable. You can actually loosen them back up if you need to. Now, the thing about this, this whole thing will be electrified, of course, so we want to insulate it from the post. So that's why I take another little piece of home run wire here, or just another little piece of 14 gauge wire. Doesn't necessarily have to be home run. And do the same thing. I'm just going to make a nice little loop out of this. After I put the tensioner on, of course. Not be ignorant. So as you can see, the tensioner will be insulated, or the tensioner will be electrified, and this wire will be electrified back to here, but of course this corner insulates so the wire going around the post does not become electrified. Push that through. Now this is a good time. You want to try to get as much slack out of this as possible before you start to spin it. That way you don't end up with a big spool of wire wrapped around your tensioner. So uh, now would be a time to pause and uh, go down and, and test to make sure you don't have any, uh, any obstructions in the way, any sticks holding your wire back, anything that's going to be an issue there. But if it's all clear, then you're ready to start tightening. So we're going to, I'm just going to put one little twist in this. And then cut off the excess. And then I'm going to give it a twist. Now you may be wondering, because <clears throat> I'm wondering the exact same thing too. This is the beauty of, of uh, doing this type of stuff. Again, we're no experts. This is the first time I've used a tensioner like this. And quite frankly, the ones I saw people doing reviews on talking about how great these were, they actually had slotted pins here. So you could put a ratchet on, or you could put a pair of pliers on and tighten it. Um, you know, straddles the pin and grabs it maybe. So maybe I missed something there at the uh, at Rural King when I was buying this and didn't get my uh, my tensioner, so uh, our tightening tool. Well, looky here what I have. That's one issue with box store uh, shopping. They've got some of the stuff you need, but not all the tools. So I was able to go to my local feed store and find this handy dandy little tool. Five dollars. And the way it works, of course, is you just uh, straddle the, uh, the sweet out of the way. You straddle the, straddle the hub pins there. And you just give it a little bit of a ratchet action. So you can tighten it up real easy that way. So there you go. Well, next week I'm going to show you how we uh, do a creek crossing, where we take our electric fence across a, a creek, a stream that can run really high at times during the year and really low. So we'll get into that next week. Um, again, if you thought this video was helpful, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Check us out at redtoolhouse.com, at Facebook, facebook.com forward slash redtoolhouse. And y'all take care.